Mr. and Mrs. Knorr, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. five miles of hot pavements, I feel like one. At least my feet do. <laughs> Ooh, I'm never going to wear another pair of shoes again. And if anybody wants me for anything within the next 24 hours, just tell them I'm sitting up with two very sick friends. I'll fix them a hot foot bath. Well, now I know why I married you. By the way, Mrs. Walker, how's that wandering son of yours? Uh, Jerry. Andy, has something happened to Chuck? The Navy found out that he lied about his age when he enlisted. You mean they're discharging him? This afternoon, they called me to come and take him home. Oh, but I, I can't. Oh, Charles is very proud. He couldn't stand having his shipmates watch his mother come and take him home like a naughty schoolboy. Oh, dear. Well, he won't have to. Jerry will go for him, won't you, dear? Oh, well, of course. Chuck's one of my favorite lads. Oh, thank you, Jerry. You have a good record for the time you're with us, Walker. Sir, does that mean that I... It means that we'll be glad to welcome you back aboard when you become of age. There's uh, somebody waiting for you. My mother? No. Lieutenant North. So goodbye, Walker. and good sailing. Well, Chuck, your mother's going to be mighty glad to see you. She ought to be. It was all her fault. Well, how do you figure? She wouldn't give her permission for me to last out my hitch. Well, she must have had her reasons. Sure. I might get my feet wetter. Miss my morning cereal. Well? Hmm? Aren't you going to preach to me? No, Chuck. In all the time I've known you, have I ever? No. Well, it'd be silly to start now then, wouldn't it? Come on. What's the matter, dear? Aren't you hungry? Uh, guess not. Well, Charles, I fixed everything you always liked. And after that Navy food, Navy Charles good. And so's the Navy. Well, Charles, dear, I know you're upset. But isn't there anything your mother can do? Yeah, yeah, Mom. Just leave me alone for a while. I'm gonna go out. All right, dear. Probably Dorothy would like to see you. What for? I look just like any other civilian, don't I? Chuck, we've been coming here since we were kids. Yeah. And that's what they still think I am. I think you're my man.
I, I kissed a girl in Frisco. I guess sailors are all alike. Was she pretty? Pretty? Sure. Divorced, too. That's too bad. I don't believe in divorce. I wish we were on the beach at Coney Island. I was there last month. It was wonderful. I was at one soon. Where's that? Oh, up by Ching Kao. Nor Norista Sangu. You know, Korea. Oh. Then I was at Formosa and Hong Kong and a lot of other places girls wouldn't know about. I guess there are a lot of things this girl wouldn't know about. For instance, whether you love me or not. Oh, sure, Dottie. Sure I do. Only I shouldn't tell you. Why? Because I'm going to go back. Oh, no, Chuck. Look, I've got it all figured out. With $150, I can get to the West Coast and, and enlist under a different name. Oh, no, you can't. At least not right away. You just got home. Look, Dot, I belong in the Navy. I have to go. Try and understand. Try and understand. I guess there's no use. $150 is a lot of money. I have $27 saved up you can use. Thanks, but I'll get the money somehow. Don't worry about that. story to tell a Memorial Day. Let's have a root beer, Boats. Coming up. Root beer. Say, mate, didn't I see you in Yokoshuka? Sure, I remember you. I was on the tin can right next to yours. How much liberty you got? Permanent. Hiya, boy. <laughs> you still got that anchor? Sure have, Needle. <laughs> you did a real good job. Yeah. Come over to the shop sometime. I'll uh, fix up the other lot. Not too much foam on that boat. Hey, boat. Let's have another round. That's the way, honey. You're a real sport. I can afford to be. <laughs> See, I can buy drinks for everybody. The fact of the matter is, I think I will. Hey, Eddie, take care of me, will you? Sure. I'll pay it for the drinks, needles. With this. Ain't it pretty? <laughs> Someday you'll go too far, Sloan. Take it easy. Not tonight, I'm celebrating. I just took over a nice little business all for myself. Take it out. <laughs> Have a drink on me, Junior. Don't call me Junior. Oh. <laughs> Come on, kid, relax. Come on, have a drink with Sloan. What do you say? Let's put some muscles in that, huh? <laughs> Shove off, Mr. Sloan. None of that. <laughs> Pam, Jerry, come in, please. 
You look tired, Addie Walker. Oh, I, I'm all right, dear. I, I just didn't sleep. Shall we uh, sit down, Mrs. Walker? Yeah. Mrs. Walker, where's Chuck? He isn't home. Oh, uh, was he home at all last night? No, he wasn't. That's why I didn't sleep. I worried and worried and... Oh, Andy Walker, oh, Jerry has something to tell you. Well, you know how much we both think of you and Chuck, so, so try not to take this too hard because we're going to help you. What is it, Jerry? What is it? Well, I got a, a phone call from Bill Wigan this morning. He's, uh, he's a friend of ours and, uh, and a police officer. Police? Yes. Uh, well, Bill knows we're very good friends of Chuck, so... Uh, well, there's a, there's a charge of uh, robbery and assault, and Bill has a warrant for Chuck's arrest. Lieutenant, you're wasting your time. My son wouldn't do a thing like that. Where is he, Mrs. Walker? I don't know. Would you tell me if you did? No. He's guilty, Mrs. Walker. The facts are obvious. I don't know about the facts. I know Charles. Do you, Mrs. Walker? Is that why he left home before? You're trying to hurt me, so I'll say something I don't mean. I understand, Lieutenant, but it won't do you any good. I don't know where he is. It won't do you any good to hurt me. Bill, you are saddest. I'm only doing my job, Pam. Job? Bill, I think the kid is innocent. Innocent? Well, now, how in the world do you figure that, Jerry? Just look at the facts. According to Miss Lane's story, he was desperate for money. I didn't say he was desperate. He, he just said he'd get the money. It's the same thing. Now look, he had motive. He saw Sloan's roll of money and it was all he needed. And then he had the opportunity. All the witnesses agree that he's the one Sloan started the fight with. Bill, I've known Chuck since he was so high. That's a long time, but it doesn't prove anything. Yes, it does. He didn't do it. No, he just isn't the type. He just isn't the type. Well, he isn't, and I won't... Now, stop right there. I don't care what else you think, but don't start playing detective. The... Now, you heard me, Pam. You two stay out of this case. And that's an order. Mrs. Walker, I hope you realize that if this man Sloan dies, your son will be held for murder. What am I gonna do, Boats? What am I gonna do? Now, stop worrying, Chuck. We'll think of something. I know, but if they catch me, I'll get booked. And then I'll have a police record, and Navy will never take me back in. But they're not going to catch you. Why, you'll be back at sea before we know it. I wish my mother was more for it. She still thinks I'm a baby. Age doesn't matter, lad. It's the call of the sea. The air made strong medicine, I know. Well, I was 14 when it got me. Fourteen? Mm-hmm. I used to play hook and go down to the docks just to watch the ships and smell the ocean. I know. Kind of funny magic that happens to certain men. And when it happens, nothing on God's earth can stop that man from going to sea. Back it out. Matter of fact, you are. We've closed a lot of places. <laughs> What'll it be? Well? A root beer. Uh, two root beers. Two root beers. Okay. What's the pitch? Hmm? Come on now. Nobody comes in here at this time of the morning just for a couple of root beers. Are you Mr. Erickson? Not mister. Just boats. Oh, I, I'm Jerry Noy. My wife, Pam. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, we, we'd like to talk to you about that fight last night. So talk. 
Well, the police think that Chuck Walker assaulted and robbed that man Sloan. Do they? Well, you were here. Do you think so? Opinions get a man in trouble. Come on, you can put that away, because I'm not selling them either. Look, we're friends of that boy. We're only trying to help him. Well, why didn't you say that first? The answer is no. I don't think the kid cracked Sloan's skull, but if he did, he deserves a medal. Well, you don't like Sloan, huh? <laughs> Nobody likes Sloan. He's second rate all the way down the line. Thought last night, what really did happen? Well, it all started when Sloan flashed a big wad of dough. Then he began spouting off about taking over some business. Hmm. They were fighting all around here, and then all of a sudden everybody scattered. Later, Bunny, that's Sloan's girlfriend, she went looking for him. She found him with his head bashed in and his pockets empty. Hmm. And uh, no one saw Chuck after the fight? Hmm? Uh, oh, no, no, no one. And you don't remember what happened during the fight? I'm afraid not. You'll have to ask Needles. He was there when I got clipped. Needles? Yeah, he has a tattoo shop next door. Opens up about six. Needles, huh? Needles, uh, just what did you know about Sloan? Oh, nothing much. Only that I... I hated him just like everybody else. Well, that's wonderful. That's beautiful work. That's a perfect likeness. Well, if you'll leave the sketch with me, Mrs. North, I'll... Uh, I'll frame it for you. Well, uh, uh, oh, no charge at all. No, uh, I'll uh, I'll have it ready, ready for you later this evening. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Well, we'll see you later. Not you will. Uh, such nice people. Good, does it? No, it doesn't. Well, Jerry, look what I found. A ring. No, it's not a ring, darling. It's a, it's a ferrule. A what? Ferrule. It's a metal band off a cane or a fishing rod, something like that. No charge, eh? You must have made a big hit with needles. He's usually pretty close with a buck. Did you learn anything? No. Boats, you said that Sloan was bragging about taking over a business. Maybe he was working with someone, someone he just double-crossed. Well, could be. But if he had a partner, that's him right over there. Eddie Pink. He's the closest thing to a friend that Sloan has. And that's not very much. The dame with him is Sloan's girlfriend, Bunny. Cozy pair. Yeah, no. But he wouldn't dare move in on her when Sloan was around. Boats, seems this Eddie Pink has lots of little secrets. Shall we? From now on, Bunny, it's just you and me. Don't go. Hey, what is this? Just like to ask you a few questions, Eddie. Questions? About you and Sloan. You don't mind, do you? Mind? Why should I mind? I ain't got nothing to hide. Pretty nice for you now with Sloan out of the way, isn't it? You oughtn't to talk like that. Sloan and me was friends. Yeah, and partners until he aced you out of his smuggling racket. What? I didn't have nothing to do with that. The way you have nothing to do with his girlfriend? Money and me is just good friends. You're a real friendly guy. Sure, sure, that's the way it is. I make, I make friends with lots of people. Good for you. When did you and Sloan first become partners? We didn't. I told you... But you did know about his smuggling racket, didn't you, Eddie? No, I didn't know nothing about that, I swear. Strange. Everyone else did, Eddie. It's common gossip. You're his closest friend. Now talk, Eddie. Talk or I'll wring you out like a wet wash. No. I knew about Sloan smuggling, sure. But I wasn't in with him, I swear. Then who was? I don't know. He was bringing in industrial diamonds for some guy that was furnishing the dough and the contacts, but that's all I know. I'm clean. Let me go. Oh, Chuck. I've been sitting here for hours hoping you might come. Look, Doc, 
the police are watching my house, so will you tell Mom that I'm all right and not to worry? Of course. But, Chuck, you've got to give yourself up. Uh-uh. I'm not going to jail for something I didn't do. I'm leaving for the West Coast tonight. Tonight? But you can't. You haven't any money or anything. I haven't? What's this? Oh, no. What is this, a stick-up? We want you, Chuck. I didn't steal that money. Sloan died an hour ago. The charge now is murder. Good. I wanted to tell you, Mr. North, but for Chuck's sake, I didn't dare trust anybody I'd just met. So when you two were gone, I gave him the door and hustled him out. Then you gave him the money. Well, it was only $150, Mr. North. Kid was broke and wanted to get out to the West Coast. Well, it was very nice of you both. Well, I just like the kid. Why, sure, we all do. Let's see if we can't figure out somebody who might have had a real motive. Hiya, Boats! <laughs> Give me a shot. Shot? Yeah, double. What are you celebrating? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Would it be that Sloan is dead? <laughs> Who wouldn't be happy about a man like that being dead? Everybody hated him. Me in particular. Uh, he was always making fun of me. Well, he'll never laugh at me again. Never. Oh. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. North. I, I didn't see you. Your, your sketch is all framed. I'll, uh, I'll go over to my shop and, and get it for you. Oh, oh, not at all. I'll go with you. I'll be right back, Jerry. <laughs> Here we are, Mrs. North. Oh, it's lovely. And, and I know just where I'm going to hang it. Uh, I'm glad you're pleased with it. Uh, I'll, I'll wrap it up for you. Beautiful. Needles, you like Chuck. Why, why, yes, of course. Wouldn't you like to join us in helping him? Well, naturally, if I could. So that's where it came from. What? Well, the, this ferrule is off the end of your cane. And I found it in that space over there where Sloan was killed. Oh, you couldn't have, Mrs. North. I've never been there. But you must have been there. That's where I found it. Oh, well, what I meant, it, it must have dropped off recently, uh, maybe weeks ago. Couldn't have dropped off weeks ago. It was only in the last couple of days because the end of your cane is hardly worn. Oh, Mrs. North, that, that still doesn't prove anything. <laughs> Unless you used it as a weapon. Of course, that's it. The ferrule dropped off when you hit Sloan. Oh, no, Mrs. North, you're, you're making a terrible mistake. Well, if I am, the lab tests on the cane will prove it. Oh, oh, please, Mrs. North. Please. That money was mine. Sloan stole it for me. Please, don't turn me in. He was a treacherous, horrible man. He deserved to die. Please, Mrs. North. Please, help! Tell me, are you all right? Don't let him get away. Settle, Charles. You stay home till your next birthday, and I'll sign the papers so you can enlist properly. Oh, that's a deal. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking of Needles. He's such a strange little old man. And with so much talent, really. Yeah, we won't forget him for a while. I'm sure Chuck never will. Go ahead, show him. Oh, no, no, I, I don't want to. Come on, unfurl the main song. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy, a John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms.
starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSale. This has been a film presentation.